Hello again, I'm Trisha from Creative Genie and this video is on behalf of Meath County Council Libraries. It's the Magical Toadstool um, Fairy House and Garden Workshop and this is the piece that you and your children will be making. It has a little flickering light inside it and can be used as a nice night light um, in a child's bedroom as well. I am... Um, as I went through the materials there, one of the things I mentioned you're going to need is some cardboard. And the first thing we're going to do is cut out our pieces of the cardboard. That will be 17 centimetres by 22 centimetres. And if you cut three pieces of this and then glue them together so that they go hard um, and they're stuck well together, you can let that stay aside. Now, you, this make is going to take time over usually I do it over three mornings so two or three mornings so um, there is a good bit of drying time especially with the clay so the first thing I'm going to show you then once you can set your garden aside you can be working on that while the clay piece is drying so um, I'm just going to adjust the camera here so you can see what I'm doing with my hands down here and we can work on that from there so as I said, the clay we're using is air dough clay. It is really easy to work with. It dries very well, totally non-toxic. And um, I find children, children love it. You'll only need the one size tub for this. So we need our little yogurt carton first off. And just tilt that there so you can see. This clay feels lovely and most children generally love the, the texture of it. But what we're aiming to do is roll out a piece that can wrap around this um, carton. And I'd work it out with my hands first. And then just to test need another it hasn't met there you can see so I need to make it a little bit longer and this is much too fat so I'm going to pin it out we want it about a thickness of your baby finger your own not your child's so I'll show you now once I have this I'll just That's a good idea as well. Sorry to just have um, a bit of water on hand because a little bit of water is a great glue for this. You don't need to glue it together. So you can see the, the thickness of that piece. So I'm going to cut a nice straight edge on it. And I don't want this to go underneath my... my um, carton at all as I want to be able to take the carton out of it maybe after a couple of hours to let it dry so I can see there it only needs to to go this far so I'm going to cut that keep that piece aside and if they're working with the clay so I'm just going to put a tiny little dot of water along that to make it stick together so you can see my seam there and then if you wet your finger again and just work it together to try and close in the seam. Just throw a bit of blue paint in my hands there. And this clay is wonderful because once it's dry, you can paint it, you can draw on it with markers. As you see, I'm, I've got a little bit of blue paint on there. I could actually paint over that with white paint afterwards to cover it up. So I don't want to overstretch it. I want it all to be about the same depth the whole way around, but it's obviously going to taper in at the top. So what I'm going to do is, you try to do this with the safety scissors. I'm going to cut a few little snips out of it. A few little triangles like that. And what I would suggest is maybe trying to make this once or twice. What I do with the clay I'm not using is keep it covered up underneath the empty tub because it starts to dry once it's out in the air. 
if it gets a bit dry and you just wet your hands and um, mold it together again and it'll be fine so you can see there I've cut a few little slants out of it and the reason for that is I'm going to fold these pieces in and this will be the roof of my house where my toadstool lid is going to go on top of so I've just it doesn't matter that you can see the creases because they're going to be underneath the roof so just pat it down like that a bit but not too much because you don't want to overstretch your clay if it gets all wobbly and out of shape for you just take it apart and start again and practice a couple of times until you're happy with the shape of your your toadstool and you can give that a little squeeze to kind of make the top of it a bit pointier and rounder because there's plenty of clay there now as you want that kind of mushroom shape where it's thicker at the bottom and narrower at the top so we have a lovely kind of like a beehive shape there actually and just once I know there's nothing over the base of my um, cup because I want to take that out afterwards okay so the next part I want to make I'm actually going to use a bit more of this thing because that was the full one First of all, I'm going to take a little kind of cherry tomato size piece, keep that underneath there, keep it dry. So I want to make a door, probably a big wee bit too much as well. And to make my door, I'm going to get a little ball of clay like that, put it on my mat and flatten it down so I have a nice little circle. And then I'm going to stretch it out a bit. So now I have a nice oval shape. And what I want to do is just stretch it away a bit more. Then I'm going to cut a line across the bottom. So now it gives me a perfect door shape. I'm going to put my door, I'll leave that little seam to the back. And I'm going to wet where I want to stick my door with my finger. Dip it in the water. Just a little bit wet. And that acts like a glue. I'm going to stick my door on there. So you can see that now. It's like a little igloo at the moment. Okay. So now I'm going to take the rest of my clay. I'm going to keep a little bit aside because I'm going to make these little toadstools for the garden as well. So I don't need much for that. Just about that much. Keep that under there so it doesn't go dry. So I want to make my mushroom top and to do that I need a nice round ball to start with. Roly poly, come roll it round. Okay. So it's like a big fat donut at first. That's it. And what I'm going to do is I want to put my hands, my thumb underneath and my fingers on top and just squish the donut just a little bit. So it's really a nice donut shape. I'm going to hold my fingers on the top and my thumb underneath and with my other hand I'm going to start pinching the sides. So I'm going to hold it like this so you can see what I'm doing. I'm turning it around with this hand and pinching the sides out. So now look but I'm the middle bit the very middle bit is still that thick whereas the sides are getting thinner and thinner and thinner so I'm going to keep you can see my fingerprints in it I'm going to keep turning it so my middle bit you can see is still nice and thick but the sides are thinner and I'm going to keep turning it around like that so I'm making like a flying saucer out of it now really but it's still fat in the middle so you see Nice and fat in the middle and thinner on the sides. So a nice big dish. Try this out a couple of times before you're happy and make sure it's wide enough for the size of your, your bottom. You want it to be wide enough. So don't squeeze the middle, it's just the sides and you can just start spreading it around like that with your 
your hands. You see how it's getting bigger and bigger as I do that? And lovely mushroom shape. Mushrooms or toadstools have lovely curly edges. So you can bend it a bit, make it quirky shape, but the middle is still nice and thick, you see? And you can feel that if you put it in your hand, you can feel it's way thicker in the middle than it is on the sides. And the lovely thing about this clay is it gives you plenty of opportunity to play with it, roll it up, start again, you know? So I'm quite happy with that now. It looks like a big hat, a big summer hat with a big wide brim. So I'm going to wet the top here like that, just a bit, not too much. I'm going to stick my hat on. So now I've got my toadstool with the hat on. I'll just tip it upside down so I can push a bit just to make sure it's stuck well and truly on. Blend it. Yeah. Now, there's one last thing I need to do and that's make a window either side. And the way to do this is you can get one of your a little uh, stirry stick and mark out your window with it punch in like that make a window shape you can either have a round top on your window or a square top on your window so you can make your window and if you get a little scissors you can actually put it in and cut don't worry if there's scraggly bits around it because when you pull pull that bit of clay out like that pull it out pull it out and you keep that to make more shove it back under there keep that to make more toadstools you see the way it's all rough and scraggly get your little stick and press it in and press that in and this is the wonderful thing about this clay very forgiving use your fingers to smooth it down smooth the edges down see you can push it around there with the stick a bit and you have a nice lovely window in it and that's what's going to let you see your little flickering light like this your little fairy is inside it so i'm just going to quickly do another little window there that out pull it out that looks really messy when you do it at first then I'm going to get my stick and just tuck those edges in I like trimming it off but you don't have to cut it again you can just use the stick see I made this one a square see and smooth it all down nice on the edges You're going to leave this to dry because it's going to have to dry overnight and maybe mum or dad after a couple of hours um, might be able to tease the, the cup out of it and you do that by seeing if it's dry a bit and slipping the stick up the inside of it a bit just to loosen it out a little like that. You can see the stick inside there yeah. and then the cup will come away. If I do it now because it's still so soft, it'll kind of collapse in. And because the roof is heavier, it'll collapse in. So I need to, to let it dry a bit more, but it'll slip out. Um, so this is what uh, we'll have finished with it. Okay, so I'm going to pop that one aside and show you. Here's the one. I have made and dried already so that we can see it and before we move on there's also the other thing I want to um to make is a little the little toadstools like these ones here so what we do first is a little sausage shape of clay and you just make your like that little tiny sausagey bit but push it down on your table or your worktop so that 
it becomes like a little tiny cone shape. The bottom is wider than the top. Okay. And then you can make a little ball, little bead like the size of a pea, and just give it a little squish and a tiny tap of water on top and stick that on. So that's one little mini toad still. So you can make a few of those like that. And what I do is I pop them on a piece of double sided sticky tape. I pop it down on a piece of plastic or a piece of card. And the reason I do that is so that when I want to paint them like this, they are not going to keep moving around while I'm trying to paint them. So it's a good idea to make it easier for you to paint your, your little uh, toadstools when you're ready. Okay, so that's just a yogurt carton I put those on top of or the lid of the, the clay that I might not be using. <laughs> so I'm just gonna pop that back in there. Okay, so now our little house has dried and I've taken out the, um, the inside. So that came out very well. You can see our windows are nicely made. I've painted my door blue and my roof I've painted red. Well, the, the red is great because we want to do the white dots on it to show it up and um, make it stand out. On our door, we might want to make a bit of um, decoration on that as well. So um, I'll show you how to do all of that now in a minute too. But right now we're going to go and stick our fencing on our base. So that it can start to dry and this is where we need mum or dad with the um the sharp knives these knives um can be bought in deals a pack of six for 150 they're very very sharp and that's why we need a, a grown-up to do them so we're going to um do six cuts down this side and eight cuts down this side and that's because we're going to stick our pieces of fencing in. So as I was saying, the lollipop sticks, I paint them white and then, because it's, you can paint them after you stick them in or you could paint them um, before you stick them in. So I paint them beforehand because it can be just quicker. And I cut them not quite in half, they're a little bit shorter than half. And to cut, you can use a good scissors or even better if you have it, a garden secateurs. And that's a grown up's job as well. So I'm just going to cut, turn it this way to me. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. I push them in quite deep. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm actually just going to put seven on that side. Now, when I have those cut, I'm going to get a lollipop stick and pop it into each one and push down hard and wiggle it a bit so that I make each slot a little bit easier to see and I know they're deep enough for each lollipop stick. I would normally use EVA hard foam on a base for this but We have to invent new ways to be able to do all of this at home. So and it'd be a nice thing to use up all the cardboard and make some lovely, you could make lovely gifts with these. So you have all of the holes around the sides and with your glue, pop a blob into each. And don't worry if the glue goes anywhere else because it dries clear. see the glue in the holes and I'm going to pop the sticks in they're standing in nice and deep that's great stand them up nice and straight for begins to look like a little garden now Yeah. 
So they're all in. And then I've painted some of the long coffee stick stirrers as well. So we can put two of these on each side. So I'm going to, one of them needs to be just a little bit shorter. Again, ask a grown up to do this bit for you. Cut that. So for the shorter side, just cut a bit off. Okay. And the way to stick these on, you can stick them on the outside or you can stick them on the inside, whichever you want. So a dot of glue where you're going to stick them. So you're two dots on each because you're going to stick a bottom row and a top row, just like a picket fence around your garden. So I'm going to pop that down there and that one down there. And then I'm going to get a peg. Oops, coming my, my finger. Get a peg and stick those there. And another peg, stick those down there. So it doesn't have to touch every single post, but that will stay in place. I'm going to do the same on this side. Two dots of glue. And we don't have to cut these sticks because this is a longer side of the garden. So they're just about make it. <laughs> now, and then I'm going to get a peg on that one. And a peg on this end. It won't take long for that glue to dry. Just a couple of minutes for it to grab hold. And wipe the hands. It's a bit sticky. So, see if that's dry enough yet. Yep, going to pop that aside for the moment. And just before we finish this half of the video, I'm going to um, do a little bit of dots on the, the roof of your, your toadstool to make it look like a toadstool. So with a bit of white paint, you can use the pads of your fingers, which can be a handy size. So you can just put a dot on and go round in a little circle. There's one. Do you want to use different size dots? You could use one of the cotton buds. And go hold it down and swirl around in a circle a bit. And then do another one. So you don't have to do too many dots. Yeah. Some of them can be on the edge or however you want to make it. Do another big one here. And make that a really big dot. Or you can get little roundy sponges, which are what I use in the class. Um, again, they have them in Deals and in Choice or Mr. Price. And they're really, really cool. This is just a messier thing to do. <laughs> so it depends on how much mess you like when you're painting. I don't mind. A couple of different sizes. You can go back around them again when they dry just to make them stronger if you want. A little later, give them another coat and it just makes them stand out a bit better. Excuse me, wipe my hands there. So, I'm going to let that dry and we'll come back in the next video and finish off the rest of the make. Bye.